the actual physical process of upgrading a CPU is pretty easy. If you've already chosen your new CPU and you know that it's compatible with your motherboard, uh, but just want a little help with removing your current CPU and installing your new CPU, uh, that's the first thing we're going to do in this video. If you're wanting to upgrade your CPU but have never done it before and don't know what to expect or know what things you need to take into consideration when picking out a new CPU, uh, I'll be getting into that in just a few minutes. This video is a tutorial for Intel CPUs. Uh, so if you're looking for a tutorial on AMD CPUs, uh, I'm working on making a video covering that and we'll link it in the cards and the video description as just as soon as I get it finished. Uh, just like with any other hardware upgrade, uh, you first need to turn off your computer, unplug it, and remove the side panel of your computer case. Before going any further, I feel I need to do the responsible thing and make you aware that there is a possibility of damaging your PC components due to an electrostatic discharge. Uh, if you touch them and are all charged up with static electricity, uh, it is possible to damage your components. Um, this isn't as much of a concern nowadays as it was in the past, um, but it is something you should be aware of. Some people will tell you you shouldn't touch anything in your PC unless you're wearing an anti-static wrist strap like this one, securely connected to something that is grounded to the earth, or at the very least connected to your computer case, uh, which will equalize the static charge between you and the components that you're working on. Although these wrist straps aren't expensive, the odds of you owning one is pretty low. So there is another technique I like to use that also equalizes the charge between your body and your computer, uh, which is to simply touch a metal portion of your computer case like this. To remove our current CPU, we first need to remove our CPU cooler. And depending on what cooler you have, uh, this process may look very different for you than what I'm showing in this video, uh, which is an Intel stock cooler. Once you have removed your cooler, uh, we need to clean the thermal paste from the integrated heat spreader on the CPU itself, as well as the CPU cooler. Uh, to do this, I typically will use some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel, uh, and then some cotton swabs if needed. Uh, once the thermal paste has all been cleaned off, uh, we can remove our CPU from the socket. To do this, we need to push down this little metal retention lever, uh, push it out of the way from the socket a little bit to unhook it, and then lift the arm up and this will lift the retention bracket up and away from your CPU. Uh, you can then grab your CPU by the edges and lift it out of the socket. Inside the socket, you'll see all these little gold pins. Uh, they are very delicate, so to keep from damaging them, it's a very good idea not to touch them at all. At this point, we're ready to install our new CPU. Uh, so you'll need to remove it from its box and then its little plastic clamshell. Uh, it's a good idea not to touch the contacts on the bottom of the CPU if you can help it, um, but if you accidentally do, it's, it's not going to kill your CPU or anything. Uh, just do your best to hold it by the sides like this. Now your CPU must be properly oriented to fit into the socket. Uh, Intel puts these nice little notches on the CPU here that align with these little tab thingies on the socket uh, so you can't put it in incorrectly. Uh, you'll also notice there is a little triangle here on the CPU that corresponds with a triangle on the socket. Just line everything up and you simply place the CPU onto the socket like so. You then flip the retention bracket down into place, uh, making sure to align the prongs here under the retention screw, and then pull the retention arm down and lock it back into place. You will feel some resistance as you're doing this, uh, but there's nothing to worry about. Just lower the arm and lock it back under the little catch right here. Now all that's left to do is place the CPU cooler back on and you'll be good to go. Uh, if you're using the stock heatsink that came with your new CPU in its box, it will probably have thermal paste already applied to it. So all you need to do is install the cooler according to its instructions. 
Uh, but if you're reusing the CPU cooler from your old CPU, or your cooler does not have thermal paste uh, on it already, you're going to need to apply some thermal paste to the top of your CPU before installing your cooler. Two of the most common thermal paste application methods are the line and the P. Uh, for the line method, you squeeze out a line of thermal paste like this, uh, and for the P, you place a circle of paste roughly the size of a P. Uh, you can then install your CPU cooler, plug it back into your motherboard CPU fan header, and you're good to go. Okay, now for those of you that are thinking of upgrading your CPU and need a little help choosing what CPU to get, this second half of the video is for you. The first thing you need to know is do you have an Intel CPU or an AMD CPU? Uh, Intel chips are not compatible with AMD motherboards and AMD chips are not compatible with Intel motherboards. So knowing whether you have AMD or Intel is pretty important. As you know, this video is for Intel CPUs, so I'm assuming you've already got that bit figured out. The next thing that's important to know is what CPU socket does your motherboard use? Uh, not all Intel CPUs will work on all Intel motherboards. Uh, for example, if you have an i5-6600, it uses the LGA-1151 socket. And let's say you want to upgrade to an i7-10700K. Well, the 10700K uses the LGA-1200 socket. So to upgrade to it, you will need to buy a new motherboard that is compatible with that CPU as well. Uh, so if you're not wanting to change out your motherboard, uh, rather than upgrading to the 10700K, you're going to have to upgrade to a different CPU that uses the LGA-1151 socket, uh, like the i7-7700K. Now, this is where things can get a little confusing, because in recent years, Intel has gone and made things pretty murky, to say the least, for their LGA-1151 socket. Intel has three generations of motherboards that span across four generations of CPUs, and they all use the LGA-1151 socket. You would think that this would be a good thing, uh, but the truth is, uh, they first released their 100 and 200 series motherboards, uh, which are now only compatible with their 6th and 7th gen CPUs. Their 8th and 9th gen CPUs use the LGA-1151 socket as well. However, Intel changed things around a bit uh, when making their 8th and 9th gen CPUs, so they will not work in a 100 or 200 series motherboard you must have a 300 series motherboard to use an 8th or 9th gen Intel CPU. Now you're probably wondering, uh, how do I know what series of motherboard I have? Uh, typically, there will be some writing on your motherboard telling you what series slash chipset it's using, like Z370, B250, or H110, something like that. The letter kind of indicates where that motherboard fits into Intel's motherboard hierarchy, uh, and that in conjunction with the following numbers indicate what chipset you have and feature set the motherboard supports. For example, their top tier consumer motherboards will have a Z at the front, uh, followed by Q, B, and H is kind of at the bottom. Uh, the numbers then tell you what series that board is. So a Z370 motherboard is a 300 series motherboard. A B250 motherboard is a 200 series motherboard, and so on. Now, a motherboard with a Z before the number means it supports overclocking, whereas one with a B, H, or Q does not. Whether your motherboard supports overclocking or not is really only important and comes into play when uh, we start talking about CPUs that have a K after the model name. So going back to the example that I started with of wanting to upgrade to the i7-10700K, uh, the K at the end indicates that CPU is unlocked and capable of being overclocked. 
And like I said, in order to overclock the CPU, however, you must have a Z series motherboard because overclocking is not supported on B, H, or Q H series boards. Intel's K series chips do cost more money than their non K variants. So if you're not interested in overclocking your CPU or you have a B or H series motherboard, then in my opinion, there's no reason to pay Intel's uh, overclocking tax for one of their K series chips. The final thing that I feel is important to take into consideration when upgrading your CPU is power delivery. Like I've kind of briefly already touched on, not all motherboards are created equal. Some of them are designed for use in what I call your daily driver type of computers. You know, the ones that are meant for nothing more than word processing and web browsing and stuff like that. These types of PCs will typically use lower end inexpensive motherboards, which are fine for use in lower powered systems like that. You know, and they typically will use uh, Celerons, Pentiums, or even i3s or i5 processors. Uh, but they don't always offer the power delivery needed to push a higher end CPU to its fullest potential. So if you're wanting to upgrade to an i7 or i9, uh, I would recommend only doing so if you have a higher tier motherboard. It, it just doesn't make sense to me to pair a three, four or $500 CPU with a 100 or sub $100 board. So what CPU are you currently using and what CPU are you wanting to upgrade to? Hey, you know, t tell me all about it in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yep, uh, we're at the end of the video now, so I guess it's time for me to say all the stuff I usually say at the end of my videos. You, you know, all the stuff that all YouTubers say about clicking like, sharing the video with friends, and subscribing to the channel, and whatnot. On a separate note, I'd like to invite you to check out my Amazon store at the link in the video description, uh, where you can buy products that I feature in my videos. I hope the information in this video was helpful to you, and I hope that your CPU upgrade process goes nice and smooth. Hey, guess what? Since you're watching this, you are part of the 6% Club. According to my YouTube analytics, an average of 6% of people watch my videos until the very end. Uh, so just for fun, uh, please declare your membership in the comments using the hashtag 6% Club. Hey, I love you. You're awesome. Okay, I'm going to take off now. I hope you have a great day and uh, I'll catch you next time.